Ah, we're live. Hi, I'm Tom Merritt, Daily Tech News Show. Uh, Lamar Wilson joining me uh, today for the show. How's it going, Lamar? Just fine, sir. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm glad to see you're it's, chipper because you're at CES. That can break a man. I Well, I'm, on, I'm chipper because I've stayed away from the press stuff today. Ah, smart. <laughs> gotcha. Yes. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some of the things Lamar did see and, uh, and more. This is, if you're watching the video, this is kind of a behind the scenes of the recording of the audio show. As I've mentioned before, the audio show is kind of the main point right now, anyway. Not that we mind that you're watching the video. It's great. We're glad to, to have you looking mm -hmm. at us. Uh, so here we go with the start of the show. This is the Daily Tech News Show for January 6th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today, Lamar Wilson, lifestyle vlogger, YouTube guy, Mashable host, and uh, I'd like to think friend. Can I say that? We are friends. Friend yes. of all. As long as you continue to pay me, we are friends for life, <laughs> As long sir. as those checks keep <laughs> cash. Uh, Lamar is at CES. How are mm -hmm. your feet, Lamar? They are healing. I actually I was staying in a really nice hotel, so I was I was able to get into the jacuzzi this morning and and relaxing because I woke up and my legs were stiff. And that, that's just from uh, the CS unveiled. Just walking from hotel to hotel just to get to the press stuff yesterday, my feet were dead. So I'm like I'm here all week. I don't know how they're gonna survive. Yeah, no, it's a, it can break a man, yeah. as I said uh, before the show. <laughs> well, uh, we as as I've told people, this is sort of a laboratory for a daily tech news show that I intend to eventually launch in its fully formed version. One thing that people have been telling me is, you know, we'd like a little back and forth. I would like to get a permanent guest host at some point, which would read the headlines with me. Uh, but I thought today, Lamar, if you're willing to experiment, I'll read the headline and you kind of give me a quick yay or nay reaction. What do you think? I think that's fine. Let's do it. All right, let's go with the headlines. CES is in full swing, as we mentioned, and the next web reports Pebble turned some heads. The company will launch an app store by the end of January. Developers need to submit their apps by January 9th to get in on that. We also got a peek at the new luxury model Pebble Steel smartwatch for $249. That's supposed to ship January 28th. Has brushed stainless or black matte versions. And new partners for the Pebble will now include Pandora, ESPN, and Mercedes-Benz. Definitely a yay. Yeah? You're, you're yeah. into the blue steel? I mean, the pebble steel? Yeah, it, it actually looks really cool. I, I'm, I wasn't into the watches before, but I, this might be one I pick up. All right. Yeah. LG owns WebOS, uh, and as we heard, Ars Technica reports, the first LG smart TV running WebOS did appear at CES. Interface uses the card motif for all features, apps, and the t television programming. They're all equal down there at the bottom, actually. It shows up over the current program. The OS will support voice and gesture input as well as remote control. Netflix's Reed Hastings also showed up at their announcement and said that Netflix's 4K content, which includes House of Cards, will show up exclusively on LG 4K TVs. Another yay. I like WebOS. Two for two. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I like WebOS. Who thought we'd be hearing that? <laughs> yes, again. <laughs> exactly. Like 2009, all over again. Uh, AT&T may have sparked a net neutrality war. Ars Technica reports the U.S. carrier confirmed a plan to allow content providers to pay in order to exempt their content from a user's data cap. As an example of that, Netflix could pay AT&T, and then any Netflix video you watch as an AT&T customer wouldn't count against your cap. They're essentially paying your data for you. To find out more, users or businesses can go to att.com slash sponsored data. And John Brodkin, who wrote the article for Ars Technica, is going to be on the show tomorrow. Nay on this one. I think there's some sneakiness going on behind the scenes. It's going to save you money, though, Lamar. Don't worry. Forget about net neutrality. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. PC Magazine reports Google unveiled the Open Automotive Alliance in collaboration with Audi, GM, Honda, Hyundai, and NVIDIA. The aim is to let drivers access their favorite apps and music with the car's built-in controls and the in-dash display. Expect to hear more in audio chairman Rupert Stadler's keynote tonight at 8.30 p.m. Pacific. I say yeah, yeah in this one. I, I yeah. like Google and I like car technology. Yeah. Seemed, yeah, you seem sort of like yay. Yeah. Just yeah, we, we'll, like we'll see. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I think I, I'm with you on that one. Uh, yeah, wearables, yeah. obviously a big trend at CES 2014. LG has caught some eyes. VentureBeat reports the Korean electronics company announced the Life Band fitness wristband that tracks your movements and exercise, giving you data, you know, things like how many steps you've taken. Life Band works with iOS or Android, and in addition to fitness features, it's also got a touch-sensitive OLED display, can answer calls, read smartphone notifications, and tell time, all of that through a low-energy Bluetooth connection with your phone. Yay, as long as it electrocutes me when I eat too much. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you hear that, yeah. LG? Get that in the live band. Uh, the Verge reports on last night's speech by NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang, where he unveiled the 192 core Tegra K1, don't call it a Tegra 5, mobile processor for Android devices. Not just for smartphones, the K1 was shown off inside 4K TVs, inside game console type things, and cars as well. Uh, the K1 comes in two versions, a 32-bit quad-core ARM Cortex-A15. That's coming to devices in the first half of 2014. There's also a 64-bit dual-core Denver. Remember hearing about Denver at 2011? Uh, the Denver ARM CPU arriving a little later in the second half of 2014. I'm kind of eh on this because of the deceptive marketing with the cores. You know, the average person was like, ooh, 128. 192 wow. cores. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 90, 92, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know. All right. Uh, Gadget reports Intel's making a big deal about RealSense at CES. The first products with the name is a 3D camera that Intel promises will help devices see depth much like the human eye can even supposedly read emotions and faces. The RealSense 3D camera will come to tablets, Ultrabooks, notebooks, and all-in-ones from the likes of Acer, Asus, Dell, Fujitsu, HP, Lenovo, and NEC, all of that in the second half of the year. Yay. Yeah, it's cool not? stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll see how it works, right? We may change our yay later on, but I'm with you. Yeah. There. All right, we got a lot of good news from you. Of course, with CES, there's an avalanche of news, but this is the stuff that folks in the audience thought was particularly interesting. Cat and Kipper, who's good at snagging some, some interesting bits, pointed us to a BBC story about Zynga now taking Bitcoin as a payment option. Zynga has partnered with BitPay to the, allow the purchase of virtual items in certain Zynga games using your Bitcoins. <laughs> Complete name. <laughs> I mean, where, where, there's, where, where there's money, there's Zynga, and you can quote me on that one. <laughs> that's a good That's a good point. Where there's money, there's Zynga. And Bitcoins are money these days, anyway. Uh, whoever63 oh, submitted this one. It's an Ars Technica story about Roku coming to smart TVs. Roku announced this Sunday it has partnered with TCL and Hisense to release televisions with Roku software built in. That'll start in the autumn of 2014. Roku will handle the software updates, according to Wired, and it's looking for other manufacturers to join up. Hey, Samsung, Sony, you want to make some Roku TVs? Roku's all ears. I'm, I'm kind of nay on this one because I still see value in the box. Yeah, I, 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 I think the box is so important. If these apps, you know, mess up or Roku goes away in a year or two, you got your TV's there for 15 years or, or so in your house. Like, you know, I, I'd rather have the box. All right. I, I see. Yeah. I feel that way for upgradability, but then Roku says they're handling the software updates. So, I don't know. My old Roku that I bought yeah. in, what, 2008? is kind of done. It can't even get the new software updates anymore. And my and my TV okay. that I bought around the same time still works just fine. So, fair point. Yeah, I, I just if, if they so if they support it, it's fine. It's just you know there's been some cases where they, you know support is stopped, and what do you do? Splendor78 sent in this story from Engadget, uh, leaking the 12 partners for Valve's Steam machine. iBuyPower and DigitalStorm were already known, but Engadget says Alienware, Falcon Northwest, CyberPower PC, Origin PC, Gigabyte, MaterialNet, WebHowl, and Alternate, Next, Zotac, and Scan Computer are all going to join the Steam party tonight. Valve's press conference is at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and that's 5 p.m. Pacific, so if you're listening to the show after that, you already know if it's true. Yeah, I think this is going to be a cool box. I'm not a big on open source because I don't understand, you know, know a lot about it. But you don't trust hey, it, the, do you, the, the, Yeah, I think it's evil. No, the, the more <laughs> players, the, better, the more players, the better in a video game industry. 
Yeah. And uh, Webitube pointed out a Verge report about Vizio's first consumer-grade 4K TV. It's called the P-Series. Models will be available between 50 and 70 inches. These are 4K or Ultra HD. You'll hear it called both. And supposedly priced aggressively. Vizio does have good prices, usually. Vizio also showed the Verge their new reference designs. These are not cheap. They're capable of high-quality 4K as well as high dynamic range, which is different than what it means in photo. Uh, but it does make the picture look very interesting. Uh, uh, Vizio is an early supporter of Dolby Vision, which enhances the HDR video, or enables, rather, the HDR video experience. Vizio also has stopped adding 3D capability to any of their TVs. So, shot to the forehead for 3D there. Yeah. Big yay on these. I love Vizio. I have a Vizio TV myself, 55-inch. Uh, very priced aggressively. I'm glad 3D is gone because no one uses it. I have eight glasses that are sitting at home collecting dust. So, go away. Uh, and last news from you, uh, TSLUS07 alerted us to an Engadget article about Corning's antimicrobial gorilla glass. It inhibits algae, mold, mildew, and fungi, as well as bacteria. The glass uses an ionic silver coating for the germ killing. You've probably heard surfaces using that before, but what they claim is that this is intrinsic somehow to the surface, meaning it will last for the lifetime of the device. No, I'm, I'm pro germs. Put this no down. You're down pro germs. Wait a minute. Explain <laughs> that. <laughs> no, it was just a bad joke. <laughs> of course, of course, of course, I'm here. <laughs> pro yeah. germs. Although I have to say, I have not really considered algae, mold, or mildew to be a big problem, or, or fungi for that matter, on my phones. I. Uh, yeah, those are extremes. On, on how long is your phone sitting there for that to happen? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, if you've got mushrooms growing out of your phone, you got problems. <laughs> All right, as we mentioned, oh, no, uh, Lamar has been uh, pounding the pavement over there at uh, CES. There's lots of stuff yes, going sir. on, uh, lots of different uh, manufacturers making announcements. Uh, I've got the calendar for you later on if you're interested in the announcements. Right now, Intel and Toyota wrapping up. Earlier today, as you noticed, LG had their announcement. Panasonic had their announcement. You were smart, though. You avoided those press conferences because that, that'll really kill your feet standing around going to those. What has caught your eye? Yeah. Anything? You, you know, I, I, was, I was talking to a few other uh, YouTube personalities yesterday because I got in yesterday, and I did go to the CES unveil, which is a press event, and you kind of get the preview. I mean, besides, a, there was a cool uh, 360 type of speaker from a company called Dream. Uh, that looked really good. Like we'll replace your sound bar, and that was that was it was actually really really awesome. Uh, but besides like new technology as far as uh, charging your phone, putting on a mat, uh, there's some cool. Uh, I think you're going to talk about this. The, the little uh, parrot, the the little robot thing. Oh yeah, did you get around. to see that in person? Yes, I did. Yeah, that was those are <laughs> I was amazing. I got a little video of that. Yeah, so so it's a uh, well. There's two of them, right? The, there's one that's a, a, a the pocket size quadcopter, mm -hmm. right? And yeah, because the guy the guy who made it was explaining it to me, and yeah, it fit right in his hand. And you know, the, he mentioned that they couldn't just shrink the bigger one; they had to rebuild it because they were concerned about um, it, it breaking easily. Because you know, these things are going to hit the wall, hit the ground hard. So he, he had to redo the design. But it looks really really cool. It, was, it you know it. Everything's independent. It, it turns on a dime, flips. And, uh, yeah, I was just mesmerized. I've never seen these in person. I've just heard about these. So so this was your first yeah. personal introduction to the quadcopter at all, and then you get to yeah. see the really tiny one. What about the, the, the little one that was running around on the floor and, uh, and it had wheels? Did you get to see that one too? I did. The, they had, sumo, they, the jumping sumo. Yeah, they had it in this um, cylinder, clear cylinder, and it was jumping from... Uh, section to, from like stair to stair, like, and it was it was really cool to see it the, like jump up and jump up and jump up and then kind of fall down. So yeah, it's it's real. It, it actually actually jumps, <laughs> which is again it's new to me, but it, it looked really cool. The CES unveiled for those who don't know is is the official mm -hmm. CES sort of press conference and it's attempt to be a miniature CES because the show is so vast across. So many halls mm -hmm. of the Las Vegas Convention Center, the three main halls, are, which are gargantuan in and of themselves, and then hotels all across Las Vegas. They try to bring all the best stuff into one place. So there's a big room. You walk around to tables, and people are demonstrating their products. It sounds like you didn't really see anything that totally blew you away, though. That's not unusual. Oh, no, and, 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 that's, and that's the thing. I, I, yeah, I went to every booth, and nothing stood out. 
And I, I figured this morning was going to be similar. I am going to the Sony event at 5 p.m. Pacific tonight. Uh, so I'm interested to see what they what they have to say. I, I wanted to go to the Samsung one, but it starts like 15 minutes. I'll never make it. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not – there is a one thing I'm looking forward to. I mean, we know about 4K. You know, that's going to be big. Uh, I saw the LG Flex, which is that first curv curvable uh, phone. I saw that in person. And besides phones and tablets, I don't think there's any one thing that's going to blow anybody away this year. Yeah, the LG Flex isn't even an announcement at CES per se. Well, it's right. just the, kind of the first right. chance that a lot of people get a chance to look at it. Seeing it in person, did it uh, did it seem any more practical than perhaps we I mean, would have thought? It's cool. I was I was able to hold. I mean, it does curve that took from your hand, from your uh, ear to your to your mouth. And for those few people who still make phone calls, uh, that, <laughs> that's great. Um, the battery is also curvable, which is which is really nice. They were able to kind of do that technology. But again, at the end of the day, it's just another uh, Android phone. I'm not saying I'm not saying that in a negative way. It's just it's just another phone that's huge, and I'm not really into that market of huge phones right now. And it's coming to uh, AT and T, T Mobile, and Sprint. Uh, what they're saying it'll be launching soon. No pricing details were given. They were talking a thousand dollar price when the when they first talked about it. It's got to come down from that. Gonna, how much? Gonna, how much would you pay? You think? If I was into that phone, like if I okay, if I had to buy it full out, I wouldn't want to pay more than five hundred for it. I mean, it's it's a nice five. You're talking about unsubsidized too, right? You, I'm, I'm, yeah, unsubsidized, yeah. yeah. I, that, that's how I buy my phones now, just because I'm on T-Mobile, and that's the, that's just like the easiest way to do that. Um, subsidized, it shouldn't be more than. Two ninety nine max. Couple, I, and we've kind of covered most of the things that that were out there. But uh, you know, the uh, WebOS TV, the Steel. Um, it feels yeah, like exciting. if it, well, I always like to play this game at CES. Let's nail down the trends uh, that you're going to hear everyone talking about. And it seems like Ultra HD, aka 4K televisions, is one. Right. Smart TVs still seem to be kind of a subcategory of that. They're still around, yeah. Yeah, you still exactly. see a lot of people talk about that. Wearables are huge. Everybody's talking We're, about wearables. Yeah, I, th I think that's going to be the most interesting one. If, if anything, I, I target it uh, and my coverage from Mashable and for myself, it's going to be wearables. And then I Internet think. of Things, right? I saw the Belkin Crock-Pot that ha ha pairs <laughs> yeah. with an app so that you can like adjust the time or change you know, how fast or slow you want it to cook or turn the thing off. I, I guess. I mean, I use a regular crock pot at home, but the idea of it is to leave it on all day. I'm not sure I want to be tweaking and playing with it well, that was <laughs> throughout a, the whole day. <laughs> I get the Internet of Things appeal, right? To be able to control things and network things and all of that. Yeah, but I, I, I get it. Crock pot as the best example. That's the a, one thing that I usually <laughs> think to set it and forget it, right? Like, I don't want to think about a crock yeah, pot. It, That's the point. Exactly, exactly. And it, it, can, it can go for eight to ten hours. Um, another trend that we'll, we'll probably be looking at, I'll be interested in, is biometrics. You know, I, I, I won't say Apple started the trend, but Apple definitely popularized it with the 5S. Now that's interesting. So it'll be interesting. I haven't seen as many people touting that. What are you seeing in biometrics? Um, I haven't seen anything yet. I just I, I remember uh, um, a Mashable article that really made it stand out, saying you know fingerprint sensors, uh, uh, eye scanners. Are, are going to be things that, that are going to be interesting. So I'm going to, I'm going to look for them. I just want to see. Uh, yeah. That might be the hidden cat. That might be the hidden category that turns out to be pretty cool this year. There you go. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, wearables, <laughs> 4K, and Internet of Things, plus the secret category uh, of biometrics. No, I think you're right about <laughs> yeah. that because everybody wants to compare themselves to the iPhone. Still, it may not be quite as rabid as it used to be, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Well, there's a there's a look at CES. Uh, if you're wanting to know more about CES, if you're especially if you're watching this live or shortly after I, I put it out there, Samsung has their announcement going on and at 2 p.m. Pacific. MakerBot has theirs at 4 p.m. Pacific. Valve will finally announce those steam machines at 5 p.m. as I mentioned, and as Lamar mm -hmm. mentioned, Sony at 5 p.m. Pacific as well. Uh, the big keynote from Brian Krasanich, the CEO of Intel, happens at 6:30 p.m. Pacific, and Rupert Stadler's Audi keynote that I mentioned earlier coming. At 8:30. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get to that. I, I want. I'm interested in that Audi uh, Google thing. 
Yeah, I'm sure we'll we'll get a little more into fun. what they're what they're planning with the Android in dash stuff. Also mm-hmm. today, it's worth noting for anybody in India, the Sony PlayStation 4 hit Indian stores today at thirty nine thousand nine hundred ninety rupees. Uh, so you, I, I hope that translates to something cheaper. For, <laughs> well, it's, it's a round, for, not, not that much cheaper, but uh, it's in fact I think okay. it's a slightly bit more expensive, but. All right, let's look at some of the messages we have been receiving to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Mike writes in and says, I'm interested in your take on what would be successful in a larger iPad form factor. I had predicted an iPad Pro for 2014, so he's, he's reacting to that. Do you think that's an enterprise product, a replacement for a MacBook Pro, or question mark, question mark? I enjoy the show. Uh, the sound and video are great. Oh, thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. I... I was predicting enterprise, but but Lamar, I'm just going to spring this on you. If for some reason my crazy prediction about a large form factor iPad comes true, who do you think it would be for? I I would I would definitely say business enterprise. If if anything, Tom, I think, and this is dangerous to say, but I I think they would maybe maybe get rid of the Air and have a combo. Machine similar to the Surface, where you can detach this big tablet from from the keyboard, and it may it may some at some point replace replace the Air from that. I I mean that will be the that will make the most sense. I, uh, but I, I think it'll be targeted for enterprise business users, maybe education. They do seem to be slowing down, touting the Air and 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 pushing the the air forward with new models. However, everybody I talk to... There's, there's no uses an air. What's that? No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, it, yeah, it doesn't even have retina yet. I, I mean, I'm talking to you on, on one now. Yeah. So it makes you wonder, are they going to upgrade it or are they going to surprise us with the But with everybody, the who, everybody who uses the air loves it more than the iPad. A lot of my friends who use the air say, oh, I, I don't use my iPad anymore because I have an air. So... I think they'd have yeah. to bridge that gap somehow. Maybe it would be a physical keyboard on a large form factor iPad, uh, which could easily just be a laptop convertible form factor running iOS instead of running OS X. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if I'd like that. I want that multitasking operating system. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I, I wouldn't give up my ear. That's why I bought it. It's it's perfect uh, in, in the sense of the size and, and just being able to travel with it. And I like my iPad mini. Like I think that's where it fits. You know, from desktop iPad, uh, um, MacBook Air, and then iPad Mini. That it kind of it kind of seems to be the 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 trend that I, I like to have as far as sizes. Uh, I'm not sure how would I feel about a large iPad. That might be a little overkill for regular people. Yeah, if it's just, I mean, I I can't imagine, and this is not what I'm predicting, that they just come out with a you know 15 inch iPad. I think that'd be a little ridiculous. <laughs> it's gonna have yeah. to have something else too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Jerry wrote in and said, all the recent talk about the new game console wars has left me with one nagging question. Who won the last one? I know that's over the years. We have heard reports about quarterly sales and other snippets of information, but I wonder who sold the most units and who brought in the most money. I'm not sure if that is something that can even be answered, but it sure would be a cool thing to look at the numbers. Uh, Well, you can estimate it. You can go look at all those NPD and Gartner reports and try to estimate it. The companies themselves haven't issued full-on sales figures for the most part, uh, but Sony's earnings report uh, did reveal something about it back in August. Uh, it turns out that uh, Sony struggled out of the gate but have sold around 80 million units total based on a GeekWire compilation. Microsoft, mm. at that same point, and this was in August, had sold 78.2 million. The other thing muddying the waters there is they're still selling them, right? So Right, absolutely. Uh, it, it, who could win the previous console war might come down, if these numbers are as close as they look, to whose mm-hmm. secondary model sells better. And that's why the PlayStation 2, hands down, won, won the previous console war before that one, because the PS2 was the top-selling game console for years after the PS3 and the Xbox 360 came out. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> it, was, it was quite funny. Um, I, I actually had thought the 360 won because uh, the numbers touted month, month after month was showing the 360 as, as selling more, even through the holiday seasons. Uh, so maybe PS3 did have a, a ramp-up towards the end, but I always thought 360 kind of kind of wanted because remember the Wii was actually killing both of them for a while, 
and then, yeah, it, I, and then I it think slowed down. The the issue is that the Wii was killing early and then plummeted. Uh, and the PS3 yes. was doing better than the Xbox 360 early and then evened out. And the Xbox 360 did have a string of monthly wins, but maybe in total it didn't end up... Mm. Uh, you know, Q3 of 2011, the, P- the PlayStation was still a high number two. It was a number two in 2010 as well to the Wii. So the Wii and the Xbox 360 changed places. The PS3 kind of stayed a consistent second place through all of that, which could yeah. mean a, a larger total by the by the end. Anyway, uh, as uh, Beef Viper said, I can tell you who lost. The consumers. I don't know if I agree with that. Especially <laughs> with these next generation ones. Yeah, you could, you could definitely make an argument about that. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Lamar, for joining me. I really appreciate it, man. Hey. Uh, I, sp- I know how hard I- it is to collect bandwidth and energy when you're at CES, <laughs> so I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, the bandwidth was definitely an issue when I got here. It's like it, it felt like dial-up right when it, dial-up came out, <laughs> and then it, it finally it finally ramped up. So yeah, it's good to be here, dude. I, I like what you're doing. You know, I'm one of your biggest supporters, uh, good friend, and I, I wish you the best with this. I hope. Something big comes for you very soon, and so you yeah, thanks, you man. right where you left off. Yeah, I'm taking Absolutely. I'm taking it cautiously, trying to do it right. So I appreciate that. Uh, you can find mm-hmm. Lamar at YouTube.com/slash Lamar Wilson. There's two R's in Lamar. There are no R's in Wilson. Lamar. YouTube.com/slash Lamar Wilson. <laughs> and also look for his work on Mashable.com as well. Yeah, uh, but a bunch of other thanks to give to people. Sam Smith made that logo that you saw on the podcast post on Friday. Thank you, Sam. That was a great logo. That's the one being used on the subreddit right now. And then right after that, Mustafa A. from thepolarcat.com made another great logo. Uh, so I put that one up as well, and that'll be on, on today's show. Uh, thanks also to Martin Bell at twitter.com slash martinbellmusic. Martin just sent me this awesome music, and uh, I'm using it today. Sawyer loves it. He yeah, thinks no, it's they, amazing. They, they uh, so you can it. hear that at the top of the show. Uh, <laughs> shut up! Also, thanks to uh, Kildee. Uh, who has joined Tom Gerke and Scotty Rowland on the subreddit. Uh, thank you, Kildy. And don't forget, you can have a voice in what stories that I cover at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. You can also email us. That address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. And visit the website, which is dailytechnewsshow.com. <laughs> I've got John Brodkin from Ars Technica joining us tomorrow. I'll see you then. Ooh. All right, so that's... That is how the audio podcast is recorded, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again, Lamar. Appreciate it, man. No problem. Good to be here. Uh, I will figure out how to do post shows eventually. For those of you in the chat room, I'll, I'll be chatting with you here in a second. I got to go get ready for cordkillers.com as well. But I'm going to stop the broadcast now. See you next time. Thanks for watching.